So today, a popular Twitch and TikTok, you know, quote unquote star, I suppose. I mean, they had almost 2 million followers named Polka Princess uh, has been sued by Nintendo, which she's had to uh, change her username and actually make payments to Nintendo. Uh, and why is this the case? Well, it's actually something I want to cover specifically because, hello, I obviously am using technically a copyrighted name in my channel name. We're called Nintendo Prime. I do not own the word Nintendo. Uh, clearly, Nintendo owns that word. So is this something I'm going to have to worry about? And what things have I done differently to perhaps avoid some of the issues that Polka Princess has worked with? Now, I've actually worked with Nintendo in the past. Uh, you figure that might give you some leeway, but legally, I mean, I, I could always face some issues. But before I get into this, I want to remind you we got a couple giveaways going on. The first is for a Nintendo Switch, a Xbox Series X, and a PlayStation 5. The second and maybe most important is for Pikmin 3 Deluxe. We're giving away two copies of that. To enter, head down to the description. We're also on our road to 100,000 subscribers. So, hey, like this video, you know, subscribe to the channel, comment down below, all that jazz. Hit that bell icon so you're notified when all of our new content goes up. Uh, and be sure to, hey, check us out on Twitch at twitch.tv uh, uh, or whatever it is. My YouTube, my, my, my Twitch channel over there is Nintendo Prime TV. Uh, look it up. There'll be a link down in the description of that as well. We do do exclusive streams now over on Twitch. We just had one the other day where we gave away a couple $20 uh, eShop gift cards, or tried to anyways. Uh, we'll be doing that again here uh, later this week. All right, let's get into this. So, uh, you know, so Polka Princess is someone I've never heard of because I'm not a TikTok person, right? I don't, I don't use TikTok. I don't even think it's installed on my phone right now. Uh, I've, I've dabbled in it before because my kids were interested in some stuff on it, but I don't really look at TikTok that much. But Polka Princess is very popular on TikTok, 1.9 followers. She also happens to have 50,000 people following her on Twitch where she does live streams and stuff like that. Of course, it is Twitch. Uh, but the issue came up not so much, I think, about her username, but some things that she's done that uh, are, are very, very interesting. So um, she did two different things. One, she trademarked her username. All right, uh, that, that's that's typically something you're going to want to do when you're a business uh, and you have a brand. Now, there are ways to work around having to trademark specific names, um, but I'll get into that in a moment. Uh, and then the other thing is uh, she was selling merchandise, and I sell merchandise as well. I think only like four people ever have bought part of it. I have a link down in the description if you care to buy merchandise. But the point is that she trademarked her name, her username, and uh, created merchandise inspired by the Pokemon franchise. Obviously, with her username being Polka Princess, you could tell she's a big Pokemon fan. Um, and the imagery included things like Pokeball, uh, Mew. Obviously, these are copyrighted things. Now, typically, uh, you might be like, but I go on fan sites all the time. And I go to TeePublic. I go to all these other websites. They have tons of Nintendo copyrighted stuff on there. That's right, they do. But... Um, while Nintendo hasn't gone after sites like that and shut down those designs from those creators, they also don't have trademark names uh, associated with it that kind of make it a business, right? It's just a one-off fan selling some sort of, you know, quote-unquote fan art design, even though some of the designs are clearly just the official art. But anyways, we're not here to debate about that. We're here to talk about uh, this person, Poker Princess. So, um... The star uh, has taken uh, to YouTube to explain why uh, she changed her, her channel name because she had to suddenly change her channel name. Uh, she dropped Polka from the name. Um, she'll be now be known as Digital Princess. And she said, I was young and dumb and was just going full force with it because I didn't know what I was doing wrong. Um, she received a cease and desist from Nintendo and believes that it may have been issued thanks to the merchandise imagery, her trademark, and the fact that she also works in the adult entertainment industry. So that's something to consider as well. The industry she works in is something Nintendo does not want to be associated with. Presuming that Nintendo might have wanted to distance itself to keep its family-friendly image. All right, so Nintendo Ninjas kind of did their thing. So here's my thing. I think she clearly was gone after because she trademarked her name and then sold the merch. I don't know that the adult entertainment industry connection had anything to really do with it. Um, I, I don't honestly think that that is something that uh, Nintendo would even mention in a lawsuit. Uh, I think that clearly 
if she didn't trademark her name and just sold merchandise that had Nintendo stuff on it, they probably wouldn't care as much. But Pokemon Company, dude, Pokemon Company is really strict. They shut down a uh, a gathering at a bar, right? There was an advertised gathering at a bar for this group of Pokemon fans uh, that had like a Pikachu image with it or something. And literally the Pokemon Company shut down that gathering down not letting fans gather to celebrate pokemon on their own because the advertisement which by the way wasn't something that like they were making money off of um was uh using an official image from from pokemon so pokemon itself is very very restrictive with the use of their imagery that's where you get the issues with the uh with, with the merchandise but then you also have the fact that polka uh was used in a trademark so Here's where I get to avoid some of this legal mumbo-jumbo because I have Nintendo in my name. One, obviously Nintendo isn't Pokemon, so Nintendo is a lot less restrictive than the Pokemon company is. But Nintendo is notoriously restrictive as well uh, with some of their stuff. So, one, my logo is 100% originally made. It is inspired by – my logo is inspired by a bomb -omb, right? I think anyone who you know kind of looks at it, squints their eyes, can tell, hey, look, my logo for Nintendo Prime is a bomb -omb. But it's not – a bomb -omb that's using any art assets from Nintendo. It's 100% originally made for my channel. So while it's inspired by, that is uh, legally allowed. You are legally allowed to be inspired by other art, but make it 100% your own. So yes, that is one way that I get around it. It's not trying to be called a bomb -omb. It's clearly just a symbol uh, based on a Nintendo thing, but uh, not using any of their assets. Now, the Nintendo Prime name. For those who don't know, uh, my YouTube channel and my Twitch and Twitter and Facebook uh, and the Discord server, everything that has Nintendo Prime's brand name attached to it is legally a business. So as much as we talk about how, oh, I do this for fun, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm just, it's just a hobby, all that jazz, because I make money doing it, right? I get, I have a contract with Google. Um, and, and, and YouTube to make money. I have a contract with Twitch to make money. I have a contract um, with merchandise, uh, you know, people when I sell merchandise. So I have a contract with Streamlabs as well to accept donations during live streams. Everything has a legal binding contract. And on that contract, you have to have a business because this is all a business. This is all business income. They don't tax the money from you. You need to pay the taxes yourself. Uh, that's just how this stuff works. So like when you get paid from YouTube and Google, they don't take taxes out of that paycheck because you are a contract employee. You need to pay, pay the taxes on your own. Your business needs to pay the taxes on their own. And yes, because the way that this money comes to you, you pay business taxes. You don't pay personal income taxes. You pay business taxes, which by the way, business taxes are awful, often higher than personal income taxes. Now, there are workarounds with this depending on how you set your business up. Uh, you could you could have your business set up as, say, an LLC, which is a standalone business, and then you're an employee of that business, and then you can lower your tax rate on the business by having a, a certain percentage of all revenue that comes into the company be considered a personal paycheck uh, and have that go to a separate account. That's a big thing. It has to go to a separate account. And then when it's in that separate account, you would pay normal income taxes versus business taxes. That's one way to reduce your taxes. There's a lot of people that do that. Uh, and LLCs are really great because they also protect you and your assets. So let's say... I do something with my channel that Nintendo hates, and Nintendo Prime gets sued. If Nintendo Prime got sued, my personal income and my personal assets cannot be touched. The only assets I could lose in the lawsuit would be, you know, the channel itself, uh, all associated, connected, you know, social media, so you know, Twitter and all that jazz, uh, and they could seize anything that's a work-only device, and it has to be a work-only device. So, like the camera that I use to record with, they could seize that. Uh, they could seize um, any of the merchandise I have in my house. They could seize uh, any, you know, maybe even some of the lights I have that are exclusively for this. That I do not use for anything else. You know, they could maybe even take my microphones or something. I don't know. But what they can't take is they can't take my car. They can't take my house. They can't take my TVs. They can't take my even my video game systems because they are used outside of business. So the point is that when you turn your company into an LLC. You are personally protected. So if Polka 
it, you know, trademarking her name and, and all this stuff. If she if she had created a business around an LLC, none of her personal assets could have been touched. It could only be business assets. And if the business doesn't have the money in the bank to pay the fees, they can't take that money out of your personal paycheck income. They can't touch that money. All they could do is seize assets from the quote unquote company to fulfill it. And if the company doesn't have the assets, it is what it is. It can go bankrupt, but you are protected. So the company could be bankrupt, but you're not. I hope this makes sense. It gets really technical. That's not how I'm actually set up though, but it is something that I will be setting up uh, at some point. Uh, right now I run everything under a sole proprietorship. So what that means is everything is basically registered to my name legally. So when I say, hey, this is Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime, well, here's the thing. Nathaniel Ruffle Jance is the name of my legal business. I, I am, I'm a registered sole proprietorship owner in, uh, in the state of Wisconsin. So I am a legal business. And what Nintendo Prime is, is an entity that is part of that business. So if Nintendo wanted to sue me, they wouldn't sue Nintendo Prime. They would sue the business of Nathaniel Rumpeljantz. The big thing here, and this is why I, I don't go for trademarks, is one, I know that Nintendo is a trademark name. If I go for a trademark for Nintendo Prime, that's not going to work. But what I can do, what I can do is trademark my name, the Nathaniel Ruffle Jance, and then the business is protected under that full trademark. So Nintendo Prime being a subsidiary of that business would be would have some protections. Other people could technically use that Nintendo Prime name and brand if they want, but there would be some legal protections there for it being um, a business that's owned underneath my name. Now, there's some things I could do about this. Uh, you know, as I said, mentioned when you set up an LLC, often you don't want to set up like set it up as like Nintendo Prime LLC. You want to set it up like Prime Gaming LLC or something, and then Nintendo Prime is a subsidiary. You always want to keep the main uh, brand of your thing, whether you know it's Nintendo Prime or, or or whatever. You always want to keep that as a subsidiary rather than the main branch. You all you never want to register your main name as like that is. The, the business name because you put a lot at risk when you do that because then everything is tied to that name rather than to the protections that exist as a subsidiary. So what happened here is that Poker Princess is not a subsidiary. It is just a person out there who decided I want to trademark my name. And yeah, I'm sure for the money that she made, she obviously had probably had a sole proprietorship set up on Twitch and stuff like that. I don't know how money on TikTok works. I don't know if there's ads. I'm not sure if she just gets sponsors or something. But the point is, that um, she probably is the sole proprietorship, and then she was trying to trademark a brand name. Which, when you trademark a brand name, it, it gets a little it gets a little technical in, in how the business side works. But reality is, this was a red flag to Nintendo, and then that red flag led to them discovering that she's selling Pokemon related merchandise, and the Pokemon company probably got pissed the fuck off, and they went after her. And yep, she had to change her name. There, there, she to she's lucky that Nintendo isn't ceasing her assets because they had a right legally to cease her TikTok account and cease her Twitch and, and, and take her YouTube and all of her social media. They could have done that um, and left her as a business sole proprietorship alone, but they didn't. Instead, they, they're they forcing her to change her branding and to pay a, a, whatever the fine it is, uh, which they're probably determining for the trademark filing violating uh, Nintendo and the Pokemon Company's rights, and then whatever they determine the uh, money lost was on merchandise sales. I don't know how much merch she sold. With that, you know, 1.9 people on t on uh, TikTok, she could have probably sold quite a bit of merch. I don't know if it's hundreds of thousands of dollars, but I, I find this whole thing interesting because a lot of people starting out use branding of their favorite companies in their channels, including me. But they do so without understanding the full legal repercussions of doing that. And it's not like Nintendo themselves hates everything. Like, if you guys remember Alex, Captain Nintendo dude, he's back, he's doing, he's doing YouTube streams and all that. But back when uh, he was in the good graces of Nintendo, waiting in line to be the first to get a Switch, first to get Mario Odyssey and Splatoon and all this jazz, uh, and having Reggie sign his systems and, and Doug Bowser and all this, like he, he was actually, you know, Nintendo really, really liked the guy. Well, obviously, the name of his channel was CND, a.k.a. Captain Nintendo dude. But... His official logo and everything was completely custom made. So the thing is that Nintendo will generally leave you alone if you're customizing things. Like if she created, if she did not try to file a trademark uh, and left her name alone and just left it as a sole proprietorship. And then uh, when she was doing the merchandise, which I'm sure the merchandise vendor told her she should trademark her name. Um, but if she, when she went to make that merchandise, if she had used a lot more um 
let me see, artistic depictions of Pokemon. Uh, rather than going with like, you know, Mew, which looks like almost an official art kind of Mew in the shirt that we saw earlier. Uh, if she would have went with a really more, um, a, a lot more artistic, like if someone would a Picasso rated or something, she would have been able to sell that. Uh, so, it, it, and with a Pokeball, it's, it's really hard to change up the Pokeball design enough to not upset Nintendo. Um, so I don't know if she would have even been able to use that Pokeball design. Uh, but I, it, yeah, it's just... It gets really sticky when you're dealing with this. And I wanted to throw this out there because I know there's a lot of people out there, a lot of other content creators, a lot of other people that we be interested in finding out why did this person get get tagged and how can I avoid it? Um, it, it it's a really nuanced, complicated thing. Some of it's dumb luck that they just don't notice what you're doing and you get away with it for a while. Uh, but I'm protected. Um, one, I have, a, I have a lawyer for my business. Uh, but beyond that, I, I'm also protected uh, because I don't use any of Nintendo's uh, direct assets in any official branding or merch that I sell. All my merchandise is my my logo. That's 100% a custom-made logo. Uh, and, and then the name of my channel. I don't use any Nintendo art assets. And if you guys ever wonder, why don't you release T-shirts that have, like, you know, Nintendo characters on it? Why don't you release T-shirts that – because I can't legally from a legal perspective i can't be doing that that's begging nintendo to come after me so if you ever wonder why i don't have you know that kind of stuff i can't do it now can i do catchphrases yeah but the catchphrases have to be unique to my channel i can't take quotes from a nintendo game you know it's dangerous to go alone and throw that on a show i can't do that technically technically i am you know getting right up there getting close to you know copyright infringement so there's a lot of nuance here, but I hope you guys learned something. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Nathaniel Robojance from the Center Prime, and I'll catch you in the next one.